Welcome to the seventh lecture in Abstract Algebra. The topics that we'll explore in this lecture include an introduction to algebraic extensions, and we'll continue our survey of complex numbers. Okay, so recall that a number alpha is algebraic if it is a solution to a polynomial equation with integer coefficients So now we'll define a new term, a number alpha is an algebraic integer if it is a solution. to a monic polynomial equation with integer coefficients. Recall that the word monic means that the leading coefficient is the number one. That is the uh, the multiple of the highest power of the uh, indeterminate or variable uh, x, say, is the uh, number one. Now, the definition of an algebraic integer does not necessarily coincide with the set of integers unless the monic polynomial is linear. For example, something of the form a plus, or rather x plus a equals zero, where a is an integer. So let's look at an example. Let the number alpha be the number a plus b times i, where a and b are integers. Then alpha minus a is equal to b times i. If we now uh, square both sides, we have alpha squared minus two times a times alpha plus a squared equals b squared times i squared. Now remember i squared uh, is the number negative one and so we have alpha squared minus two times a times alpha plus a squared plus b squared equals zero. And so the number alpha is a solution to the monic polynomial equation x squared minus 2 times a times x plus a squared plus b squared equals 0. 
and this uh, polynomial equation has integer coefficients. And so the number alpha, which is the, of the form a plus b times i, is an algebraic integer. Now this number is a uh, linear combination which includes a multiple of the number i. We have a name for uh, such a linear combination, an algebraic extension, is similar to the vector space. and is an extension of a set to include linear combinations or to include multiples of a number not in the set. So the number uh, that we have just looked at, alpha, being a linear combination to include multiples of the number i, is an algebraic extension. And we have a name for this uh, set. The algebraic extension of the integers to linear combinations including integer multiples of the number i is called the Gaussian integers and we denote this set this way Z parentheses I with I in parentheses this is the set of all numbers of the form A plus B times I where A and B are integers and again, we call this set the Gaussian integers. This is in honor of the uh, mathematician Carl Frederick Gauss. So uh, from the uh, example that we just looked at, it is evident that every Gaussian integer is an algebraic integer. Right. We can extend other sets, such as the set of rational numbers, the algebraic extension, of the rationals, to linear combinations including rational multiples of the number i
is called set of Gaussian numbers. And we denote this set this way. Q parentheses I, and this again is the set of all numbers of the form A plus B times I, where A and B are rational numbers. And so the set of complex numbers is therefore an extension, an algebraic extension of the real numbers. And as we have already seen, this is the set of all numbers of the form a plus b times i, where a and b are real numbers. So as the complex numbers uh, is an algebraic extension of the reals, we would expect that what is true of the real numbers is also true of the complex numbers. In particular, we would expect that we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide complex numbers. And we will show that we can. Uh, but recall from the previous lecture that uh, our model for the complex numbers uh, is a set of numbers that occur in the complex plane. And that the complex plane is uh, viewed as a vector space over the uh, real numbers. That is, if a number z is a complex number, then that number z is represented as an ordered pair of numbers x and y, where x and y are real numbers. We call the first uh, coordinate, or the first component of the vector, if we want to think of the ordered pair as a vector. Uh, the real part of the complex number z, and we call the second coordinate or second component the imaginary part of the complex number z. And as a vector space, we uh, have a notion of addition of vectors, that is addition of two uh, ordered pairs of real numbers in this case, uh, z sub 1 plus z sub 2 is the sum of two uh, ordered pairs, x sub 1, y sub 1, plus x sub 2, y sub 2. And this is the ordered pair whose real part is the sum, x sub 1, plus x sub 2, and whose imaginary part is the sum, y sub 1, plus y sub 2. Now, what distinguishes the complex numbers from a uh, vector space of r squared over r is that we can multiply complex numbers. z sub 1 times z sub 2 is the product of two ordered pairs, x1, y1, with x2, y2. And this is defined to be the ordered pair whose real part is the uh, difference x1 times x2 minus y1 times y2, and whose uh, imaginary part is the sum x1 times y2 plus x2 times y1. All right? Now notice that the uh, addition and multiplication of complex numbers is uh, commutative. And we say that uh, addition and multiplication are commutative. over the set of complex numbers. That is, z sub 1 plus z sub 2 is the same as z sub 2 plus z sub 1. Order does not matter. And we can show this by uh, the looking at the uh, ordered pair. We, we have x x sub 1 plus x sub 2 as the uh, real part of the first sum, 
and y sub 1 plus y sub 2 is the imaginary part of the first sum. This is the same as the ordered pair whose real uh, part is the sum x sub 2 plus x sub 1 and whose imaginary part is y sub 2 plus y sub 1. And the product z sub 1 times z sub 2 is the same as the product z sub 2 times z sub 1 since once again, if we look at ordered pairs, the uh, real part of the first product, the product on the left of the equation, is x sub 1 times x sub 2 minus y sub 1 times y sub 2. And its imaginary part is x sub 1 times y sub 2 plus x sub 2 times y sub 1. This is the same as the ordered pair with the uh, real part x sub 2 times x sub 1 minus y sub 2 times y sub 1 and uh, with imaginary part x sub 2 times y sub 1 plus x sub 1 times y sub 2. And so uh, addition and multiplication are commutative over the complex numbers. Okay, so next we'll start to look at some of the important properties of the uh, complex numbers together with a given operation. And so state this as a lemma. Let the ordered pair uh, consisting of the complex numbers together with the symbol for addition, notice the angular brackets, uh, denote the set of complex numbers together with the operation of addition there exists the number 0 which is the ordered pair 0 0 in the set of complex numbers such that for every complex number z z plus 0 is equal to 0 plus z, which is the number z. The number 0, which again is the ordered pair 0, 0 in the set of complex numbers, is called the additive identity. for the complex numbers under addition. Okay, so we need to prove this lemma. Clearly, the number zero, which again is the ordered pair 0, 0 is a complex number. Let the complex number z be the ordered pair x, y. Then z plus 0 is the sum of ordered pairs x, y, and 0, 0. This is the ordered pair x plus 0, y plus 0, which is the ordered pair x, y which is the complex number z. Now as addition is commutative, we have that z plus 0 is the same as 0 plus z, which is the number z. All right. 